Hello, I'm State Representative Mindy Greilin, Chair of the House K-12 Education Finance Committee. This fall, 100 school districts in Minnesota are going out for school levies. Some will pass, others won't. Some districts won't even try, but the end result will be a patchwork of school districts that provide different levels of schooling based on where they live and if their community can pass a levy. This school funding crisis should be unacceptable to Minnesotans. We've always prided ourselves on great schools and our reputation as a leading education state. How did we get to this point? For more than a decade and a half, schools in Minnesota have struggled, rarely getting enough state funding to keep pace with inflation. Things got worse in 2003 that's when Governor Pawlenty and House Republicans made the first real cut to school funding in two decades to keep their no new taxes pledge. They cut school funding by $185 million and made another $437 million in funding shifts. At the same time, basic state school funding was frozen, not a dime to keep pace with inflation, even as health insurance heating fuel, and transportation costs were going through the roof. Class sizes and fees skyrocketed. Summer school, special education, English language programs, and Head Start were all slashed. Well, it started uh, where it was most impactful last fall when there was a $1.6 million cut and the music program was significantly impacted. Um, not to mention that you know, numbers of teachers would have to be cut, many classes would have to go away. Now we're seeing school districts across the state pay the price. Some smaller rural districts may even be forced to dissolve, like this one in Frazee, Minnesota. As a parent, it's been very challenging for me. When the last referendum failed, at that time my son was eight, and he came home and he said to me, Mom, is my school going to close? If the referendum does not go through, you just flush your school district down the toilet. Property taxes were never meant to be a primary source of funding schools, and yet those 100 Minnesota school districts have no other choice given the current funding climate. It will take real leadership, the kind we haven't seen yet from this governor, to make the changes we need to produce world-class students, nation-leading schools, and a global competitive edge. Without real leadership, we're destined to fail in more ways than one. We can do better. We must do better.